multi-zone mini split not cooling we've got a multi-zone outdoor unit we've got three indoor units two of them are cooling and one of them's not cooling today i'm going to help you to be able to troubleshoot a mini split like this you're watching hvac tips for technicians i'm tad let's get started a friend of mine installed his own multi-zone mini split when he got done two of the units would cool and one of them would not so he gave me a call said hey tad can you help me i said sure i'll come over there we'll figure it out and we're going to figure it out together so i've got some gauges hooked up we've got this is a three ton uh, multi-zone unit from della and i actually gave him a discount code so he was able to save some money so that's the reason he went with della and i'll give you guys a discount too down in the link in the description so i've got my high side hose and my low side hose hooked to the suction line of two of these units so I can measure the low side pressure of two of the wall mount air handlers and the reason I did that is because I want to compare the one that's not working with the one that is working so we've got an 18k a 12k and a 9k connected to this outdoor unit this is 36,000 BTUs and you can actually connect four of four indoor units to this outdoor unit let's look at our pressures and our temperatures so I've got low side hose hooked to the low side port for the 18k and then I got my high side hose hooked up to the low side port for the 12k so we're gonna measure the pressure first so the 18k 96 psi and then the 12k 97 psi so not much difference right saturations about 30 so you can see the saturation right there, see? 29.8 and then 30, so 30. Now let's measure the temperature. Temperature for that 18K is 57. Temperature for the 12K is 47. So we don't see a big pressure difference, but we see a temperature difference and it's about 10 degrees. So if we take 47 and subtract it by saturation of 30, that's 17 degrees superheat. That's pretty good. For a mini split like this, I wanna see about 10 degrees of superheat. But for the 18K, the suction line temperature is 57, 58. And if you subtract 58 from 30, you're looking at almost 30 degrees of superheat instead of 20 degrees, right? 17 and then 27. So our superheat is high. So what does that mean? We're likely low of refrigerant. And anytime you have a multi-zone unit, you only have a certain amount of line sets that the equipment is charged for. You need to check out your user manual because usually that information's in there. Uh, for instance, a two-ton model may be charged for up to 75 foot of line set. A three-ton model may be charged for 100 foot. If we go over that, there's additional refrigerant that has to be added. Usually you can look at the outdoor unit's tag or the manual for the calculation for how much per feet you're supposed to add. So let's go ahead and go inside. Let's use our psychrometer and let's check our supplier temperature of each unit and compare before we add refrigerant. Right, we're measuring the supplier temperature and it's dropping, but it's in the 50s and that's great. See 55. So let's go ahead and move and it's going to go to 54. Let's go ahead and move to the next head and measure the temperature split there or supplier temperature. All right, here's the second head. 54, 53. 52, 51, so yeah, it's cooling. Those two heads, great. Let's move to the 18K. Measuring the supplier temperature of the 18K, 75. So this is blowing room air temperature. It's not cooling. And the other two are in the 50s. We got the 410A refrigerant on the scales, and we've got the scales zeroed out. We've got a suction line temperature for that 18K was 55. And then the pressure before we start charging, you can see is 98. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start adding liquid. You can see the scales go up over here. And we're gonna probably add about eight ounces. And then we're gonna see if that suction line temperature drops. It should drop, pressure for our low side should go up. And there it is eight ounces right there that is a half a pound and let's wait about five minutes and see what happens so I added refrigerant 
and this temperature actually went up and that's not good then look at our pressure our pressure went up a little bit 103 that's all right but we're still not getting any cold air and in fact the unit shut off and after the unit shut off I was looking for an error code I was looking at the indoor unit and then right here I took the top off you can actually take and lift this cover off first you got to get these wires out lift this cover off and you can see LED lights and they're right here they're over here LED one uh, two three looks like maybe four looks like three though and there could be an indication there right we may have to look at our user manual look at our error codes our LED lights and figure out what the description means but I really think that during the installation there was a line kinked so let's take a look this line 60 degrees right let's take our clamp Let's come over here. Let's put our clamp right here. You see how the line temperature is going up? We're not we're not sending. So as you can see, this temperature probe is picking up a suction line temperature, vapor line temperature of 81 degrees. We take the same probe over here put it back at the outdoor unit nice and cold right it's dropping so we're sending liquid from our outdoor unit to our evaporator right it's absorbing heat and then it comes back as a low pressure vapor I think somewhere we've got a kink because this is 58 right here or 56 and then it's 80 over there. So we got to find this kink Wasn't able to find a kink in the line sets connecting the outdoor and indoor unit I'm going to show you what I'm doing to take the cover off so I can look at this coil and maybe the lines coming in So I've got screw here 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 and then I'm, I took off the display board Which is mounted to the front cover. I took off this cover which is the cover for the electrical and I'm going to take This little front panel off oh, damn it. Front panels off now I've got my indoor air sensor, and then there's some tabs back here you can't really see them, but I'm going to lift up and go along the back. Oh, that side is loose. Oh, I've got some more screws to take out. I'm going to take this piece off. Like so. And then I've got a screw. Looks like you can do this. Oh, that screw's right. Let's see, there's a screw there. And then all the way over here on the other side. There's a screw right there. Well, there's one screw. There's another screw. Now, I should be able to take this front cover off, exposing the coil. Coil's not sweating. Coil's not cold. The refrigerant's not even arriving here. So, it can't be here. It's got to be outside. Put the unit back together, and this is a good one. Right now, I'm a little frustrated, which is good. Good news. Now let's go figure this out. I just went on a wild goose chase because I wasn't thinking. Man, I am literally frustrated because I just found out the problem and I knew the problem before I even looked because I got to looking at these pipes and it says system A, top, system B, number two, system C, number three, system D, right? We're not using A, A. We're using B, C, and D. And even though I didn't hook this up, I'm still upset because I should have checked this first, Tad. Man, anyways, let me show you what's wrong. Look. It says A, B, C, D. This is the bottom set of pipes. This is the top set of pipes, which we're not using. This is what's supposed to be hooked up. This is supposed to be hooked up here. And that's the reason we're not sending refrigerant to this. We're sending refrigerant to this one. All right, so, and that's the reason these are labeled. A, B, C, D. Make sure whatever you hook up, you hook up the wires to the right location, the right terminal block. 
each terminal block goes to a specific set of pipes. Oh, at least you know where the inverter board is. You know how to take the indoor wall mount air handler apart. And you know that it matters what set of pipes you hook up and what set of wires you hook to what terminal block. Man, I'm such a rookie. <laughs> So, so my son, being an electrician, he... Your son hooked it up? Yeah. Man! <laughs> and I could kick him right now. I could kick your son right now. Yeah. Would you let me? He, he's supposed, he's supposed would to you let me? Would you let me kick him? Yeah. I'm going to kick him too. <laughs> oh, yeah! Sorry. Right. Let's get this fixed. We'll reach it. Uh, Make sure you disconnect the power before you touch anything electrical on a mini split. It's got an inverter board. It's got a bank of capacitors that hold charge. So disconnect power 15 minutes, then make all your changes. Since I have made the changes that were necessary that I should have made when I first got here, but I didn't start from step one, I assume the install was done correctly. Never assume the install is done correctly. When you go to a service call, there could be somebody that went there before you. It's just like that, you know, you're working behind somebody. So simple mistake though, simple mistake. But I should not have taken that long to find that mistake. And I'm sorry I drug you along in this video <laughs> that long before I, I figured it out. But I wanted to be honest, you know, it's honest. So yeah, look, now it's hooked up correctly. We're using the three bottom pipes. So we're gonna use B, C, and D. Now it's back running, pressure's 130 and 130. Saturation's 45. Now let's look at our suction line temperature. Suction line temperature is 56.4. It looks like it is dropping. So we've got about 11 degrees of superheat. Down here, this pipe is about the same and it's dropping. So the pressures look better. So having that hooked up in the wrong spot was affecting not only the pressures, but the temperatures. So make sure you hook it up correctly and always go by your user manual. Now let's go inside and let's measure the temperature of that 18K wall mount air handle. Now rechecking the supply air temperature it is 58 and it's dropping. That's more like it. Now we're sending refrigerant to this wall mount air handler. One thing I did think that was impressive about this Della mini split 36,000 BTU is the fact that it only requires a maximum fuse or breaker size of 25 amps. So 25 amp double pole breaker. That's pretty impressive. If you need a mini split and you like Della products, go check out DellaHome.com. You can use discount code Taddy Digest and get around 10% off. If you are installing a mini split and you're not a professional, then make sure you read your user manual or hire a professional because it's always good to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the install or you don't damage the equipment. Uh, so being a professional matters. If you're not a professional, hire one. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience in the field to help you be a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.